Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Steve Tracy Gallery on Facebook. I want to say uh, to all of you out there that have been joining me these last 12 weeks, this is the last class for a while. We will be doing this again, uh, but please uh, just keep in touch. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and sign up uh, for our monthly newsletter at the Steve Tracy Gallery. Okay, folks, today I am going to be painting flowers, and I have a picture of peonies. So these are peonies from my friend's garden. And uh, so I've already drawn it out. I'll be painting in oils. And you can see by this photo that I took uh, that the smallest shape is light. And then the next size is mid-tone or dark rather, and the largest is mid-tone. But I'm going to paint it so that the smaller shape is light. The next size is going to be dark. Um, or the next, I'm sorry, the next size will be, will be uh, mid-tone and the larger shape will be dark. So that's going to be my math equation today. Um, and uh, I'm using oils again. Um, and I'm also using, I'm going to start out using my big, bright, uh, flat brush number 10. Um, okay, so I will come in first of all and paint in my average colors of the, uh, the composition here. And I'll start with my, uh, my light shape. And so we're going to just go into here and pa paint this, these buds. This is larger than, than life. I drew it a little bit larger and and so um, it's going to be a little dramatic. So this is my my light shape design. Now I hope all of you that has been uh, following me have been able to reference uh, our post on on our Facebook page to uh, to paint at your leisure at your own pace at home and uh, and these will continue to stay on our Facebook page so that you could use these um, for your uh, teaching aids and I hope that all of you um, that have been painting have learned something and uh, I hope you continue painting. The whole purpose of this 12-week uh, episode has been um, to help you during this uh, COVID crisis uh, just navigate in life and, and find um, a little bit of love in the painting and And, in, and enjoy it and, and maybe even pick up something that you haven't learned before and incorporate it into your, your off time, which seems to be um, a lot of lately. <laughs> I hope all of you are well and that your families are healthy and that your social distancing So I'm following my, my, my reference, which is the photograph that I took. And this is, as you can see, it's a nice design already. Um, and that's one, one nice thing about shooting your own photographs is that you can, you can create, you can you know, compositionally place your design uh, into the frame uh, at your choosing when you photograph it. 
Okay, so these this white shape goes into there's these are three P, these are actually four peonies, uh, pieces of four peonies, and two buds. I like these brighter, these uh, these flat brushes. Uh, this is, they're good workhorses. They get in, and they can unload a lot of paint. You can cover a lot of acreage on your canvas, and uh, you can always go back and tweak it with a with a um, filbert brush later. Yeah, today we're having a, a little bit of overcast. It rained a little bit this morning. I was going to paint uh, outdoors last week. I really enjoyed painting outdoors, but our our internet connection was a little bit weak. That's why we couldn't, um, that's why it might have been a little bit low quality. So uh, we apologize for that. But the finished painting was posted, and I'm really happy with it. The nice thing about painting live, or painting on location rather, is uh, that you really pick up the spirit of the piece and the spirit of the moment as well. And then we have this little bit of a petal over here. This is just the, the, the rim of the petal. Um, and it's a very thin line. And goes off the edge of the canvas. I want to say, uh, give a shout out to all of my friends in Colorado, California, uh, Spain, and uh, all over Canada. Just uh, Sure is that right now we're having just a really nice, nice summer. Summer started Saturday. And we've had some really, really nice warm days. Okay. Um, that is about it for my white shape. Okay, so no, I, I, it's, not, it's not quite this one, actually. This one is all white right in here. Okay, so just getting that. I'm going to leave some of this this little edge here just so I can see the the uh, structure of my flower. I might, might paint that in before. Probably will paint that in, but... If it's a good design and I'm happy with it, I might not. Okay, I, the reason why I wanted to make sure I got this section in here is because this whole section right here is my anchor to my white shape. And when you have a white shape in your painting, you want an anchor or a big section to hold the rest of your shapes uh, or to, to kind of hold the rest of your, your family of value, which in this case, is the white shape and just painting this in here and I think that is it. There might be a, just a few, there's a few right in here. Okay, so now I'm going to take the same brush. I'm going to go in with my deep alizarin crimson and paint in the darkest colors in this peony here. The neat thing, these peonies are about 
well, they're about a week old. They were given to us, uh, my wife and I, from our, our lovely friend, Margaret, uh, who is a dear friend. And she has the most magnificent garden. And uh, we changed the water, and these peonies lasted over a week. But the neat thing is that when they, when they get a little aged, um, kind of like older people, they, get, they gain character. And they gain, their shape becomes a little more articulated. And uh, I like that. I like articulated shape. Okay, so just dipping back into my paint, that's the alizarin crimson, which they, they call it a cool red, um, probably because it has a tiny bit of, like almost like a tint of purple in it. And, but when you add white to alizarin, it really brightens up. Okay, so just laying in those darker shapes here. The background's going to be dark. And now this is basically what I would call my average dark shape, or my average dark color. Okay. These are, this is a cluster of petals right in here. And these are all kind of coming out. Yeah, we'll post this on our Facebook page when I'm done. Okay, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. I can always come back in and add more darks, and I, I will. I wanted to say also that uh, some of you have been doing some great work. You've been sending it, sending it to our Facebook page, and sending it to me, and I really am impressed with your work. So please continue painting, and you can always contact me, and, uh, and I would love to talk about your work. Okay, so now we're going to move over to this edge here. Okay, so we have... And these are big, big petals, bigger than, bigger than life. But they're wonderful, um, almost figurative shapes. The neat thing about flowers is that besides smelling so nice and they're being so beautiful, um, they have such great movement in the in the petals and in their natural state. And when you take a flower like this and, and do a close up, you get a lot of uh, great design. Okay, so we're just again, this would be considered this red, I would consider this red to be a light dark shape. In other words, um, it's not quite black. So it's a light, lighter than, lighter than black.
and then we have these petals up in here. Now see when you when you press down on the brush how how big uh, and how wide that brush unloads the paint. That's really I love that and it gives great movement. I'm not making ditzy brush strokes. You want to kind of stay away from getting too bitsy because then you'll be locked into painting small shapes. And uh, once you start, it's kind of like tiling a, tiling a small room. You'll get stuck. Okay, we can darken these as well if they, get, they need to be darker. Okay, so those are the bulk of my flowers. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to use this gray for the shadow of this flesh tone peony. We come in here. This is one of my Gorshner grays. And again, uh, what's more important to me than painting the correctness of the subject is painting design. So painting in a good design is more important than painting in a good flower. So good design is articulated shape referencing chaos. That's in my opinion. Okay, so let's uh, go over here. We can put this is a, the probably the darkest value in these in this particular petal. So I'm going to go into some rose color. I have a pretty mixed palette of roses. Those are my rose colors. And I'm going to go into this darker rose color in here. Just laying in the basic larger shape and with peonies they're generally monochromatic and they are many different values of the same color. So that's where your your gray palette, when you have your premixed gray palette you're able to give yourself different half tones and quarter tones by the intensity of the value of that gray. So here we have another little piece in here, another little petal here. I didn't, I forgot to paint in this white shade. But that's okay, we can do that later. And having a little more intense rose, rose tone. Okay. 
let's go ahead and I'm just going to fill in the rest of my area. I my I like my design of my shapes, and that's good enough for me as far as a design. Okay, so in here we do have this rose up in here. Now this peony is mainly white. I'm going to add some rose in that gray and just gradate it. Okay, so that's, this peony is white and it has a yellow center, which is all the little, I don't know what you call that. It's the center of the flower that the bees love. And there are just hundreds of little heads that have pollen on them. And my background, by the way, is a, kind of a raw sienna. And or looking more kind of brown. Okay. Um, going into these yet other uh, pinker peonies. Taking those colors here. And I'm going to paint in the rest of this, the rest of these petals with this rose or rose color here. Now a lot of a lot of people that come to my classes. A number of them, not not a majority, but they have not painted before, and I think that the, I love it when they learn how to paint and learn how to have the experience of what painting does to not only our emotions but our our happiness level. You know, just being able to paint and create something that, something from nothing really. And, and then when you're done, you have something that is yours and yours alone. Boy, this is looking very dynamic. I love the composition of this being kind of off-centered. Okay, so these are some petals turning up. Okay, so let's look over here. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So we're just painting in the kind of the unfinished area in mass. Okay, taking this lighter rose color. And finishing off these petals. Yeah, the, the neat thing about um, the peonies is when they start aging, um, some of the petals droop, some of them are still holding up, and all of that just creates such emotion and movement and almost a humanness to them. Let's go ahead and make that pink. I don't know if, it's, if it is exactly pink, but we're going to make it pink. And then I'm going to make this darker red, which is the alizarin crimson, actually. Okay. 
and we're going to take this little pink here. This, this is the bud. Okay, so that is a paper towel on my left hand. So we're going to take a little bit of this brown. going into this Naples yellow. And here we have some of this. I'm going to take some of this gray in here. Okay. Going into my green. And hitting a little bit of the darker green. And here is a little green leaf. And I think we have a little green leaf here. That's a stem. Not much green in there, is there? So this is going to be green. And there. Okay. Well, it's coming along pretty well here. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, I'm going to work around my the crown of that white flower a little bit here and just kind of tweak that out a little bit more. First, I'm going to touch this. Okay, I just want to. I don't. I want to keep my shapes from becoming too geometric. Very important to stay away from that geometry. Okay. Um, I think at this time I'm going to paint in my background. Get that in so that we have it um, laid in. Now my focal point is right here. So I'm gonna start with my, my brightest dark shade. This is, um, this is an orange mixed with purple. It's a, it creates a great uh, color. It's uh, a, a warm color. Want to make sure that I, I keep that articulation in the shape of the petal so I don't lose the good design. And just take this brown tone and let's just bring it around the focal point, which is right in here. And now, and the reason why, uh, well, the, the brown is going to be the lightest dark, so, and the focal point is usually where the lightest lights are. Okay. This is, I mean, I love flowers. Um, and I'm 
they are such a, a pleasant part of God's creation. Okay, so as this is moving away, I'm going to get darker and darker. Now, I want to make sure I don't make a make this into my diagonal. So I want to cut into my flower just to break up that shape. Okay. Okay, so it's going to change directions, moving all the way around. Okay, now I'm going into my dark, my darker browns. Darker browns. It's a little bit of glare on the canvas, and I apologize for that. So we're just going around this petal here. This brush, this big 10 inch or 10 number 10 flat brush, um, really does a lot of work quickly, and consequently. You, you get a very painterly look when you paint quick. If you're dabbing and doodling and, and not moving your brush rapid enough, um, you're going to get a look that looks a little bit labored. And you want a painting that has a fresh look to it. And so keeping your brush moving is very important. Okay, so we've got some dark shapes here. So the dark shapes go down here to this part of the canvas, go around that little stem. And I'm just cutting in making sure I don't paint in geometry. Again, no geometry. Okay, so here, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this a dark shape. Even though in my reference, it's all flower. But I like the dark shape coming into this part of the composition. I'm going to make that a dark shape as well. I'm going to make this a little dark shape. Okay. Okay. So we're plowing through. Okay, I want this to be a you know, dark right below the bud. I want that bud to kind of stand out. Um, standing alone, looking like it's really going to open up into a nice large peony. Changing the strokes. Getting over here to the left hand side. And it's okay. There's some of this flower isn't completely painted. However, my, my dark background um, is warm, and that's why it's always good to have a warm background, because that warm background is coming through these petals, and it still has a warm feeling. And a warm painting is better than a cold painting. Now, after I do th this dark shape, excuse me, and I will um, be painting them some some highlights, which are going to really make this painting pop. Remember last week when I did the um, well, the landscape and the dark and the uh, barn rather, uh, when we painted in the highlights. That's when the painting really pops and. Actually, the highlights are my favorite because it's, it's where the painting really starts singing. 
and it's where the light hits it. And the light is so important because without light, we wouldn't be able to see. It's always good to have light. You know, there's so much going on in the world. Light can also be metaphorical. You know, I think light is also love. When you have love in your life, you've got light. When you've got light, you're not walking in the dark. And I think it's very important. There's so many people that are that are hurting right now. It's good to give them give them something to uh, to feel good about. And that could just be a gesture of kindness, right? Okay, so looking at this, um, I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to highlight. Um, well, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to paint this dark. I like that shape right there. And okay, so these uh, these peonies, I want them to have a little bit of a darker center. So before I do my highlights, I'm going to just darken up the centers of these guys. Contrast is a really good thing. Dark in the center. Okay. Now you, you could you could paint um, you can make anything look like fun with color and an honest intention to render it. Okay. So Going back into this flower here, I'm going to just increase the dark around that flower a little bit more. Well, I think that this, this particular painting is, I like the design. I could spend probably another hour on it. Um, but but I, I, I will spend a little more time on it after, we're, after we uh, go off the air. And I will, will post it on our Facebook page so that you can see it. So I have just different shades of this rose purple. One nice thing about oils is that it blends so well So these are just darker, darker earth tones, which are a little yellow ochre. And let's 
Let's do a little a couple of dashes here. They go a long ways. Just a little, little mo or mauve. I'm going to go ahead and touch that space between there. And now I'm going to move into my lighter pink. So we're going to adjust that kind of sharp highlights. And it doesn't have to be exactly like the flower, but you, you, you do want good articulated shape. Now keep the brush um, clean so you're not pulling in darker, darker pigment or contamination. How's that looking out there? I think it's looking pretty good. Now flowers are really fun to do very, very big. They're very dramatic and uh, they can really make a great statement in a, on a big canvas. Got a little brown in there. I don't want that to be in there. I'm going to get lost in here with all, all these petals. I like, can't see the tree for the forest. That's why it's good to have a good drawing. You want to, you want to have a pretty, pretty good drawing so that your you have good structure. A different tone of pink. And I'm not that concerned with the exactitude of everything. I want to be, be careful I don't get two repeated shapes in here. So I'm going to move over here. Okay.
Yeah, I'm going back into my, my brighter white, or my brighter white pink. Those smaller pieces are important for a good design. You want those smaller pieces in there. Okay, uh, I get kind of carried away, so I'm sorry for the, the dead time on the audio, but I'm concentrating here. Sometimes it's hard for me to chew gum and paint at the same time. Now I have a lovely... Uh, this is almost a purple. I'm going to touch that in a couple of places in here. And I'm going to work on this guy here and then finish up over here. So let me get my other paint here. I'm going to wash my brush. So this is kind of uh, much more monochromatic. Okay, and more flesh tone. Okay. It's bigger, bigger strokes, not, not too worried about it. Dragging it, dragging it into the gray. And uh, okay, overall, I like the design. I like what's going on. And I want to keep my brush in with big strokes. I don't want to get too small because it's going to really affect, it's going to look too bitsy. Okay, um, let me just restate some of these wider petals. So I am liking what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm just going to kind of work on this just a little bit. Just wash, wash my brush, get the paint out, because this is going to be the focal point. I want that to be brighter. So I'm going with this warm white. and just unloading paint. 
in the, in the direction of the um, uh, petals. I think I'm going to just bring that out there. Okay, and inside this is some yellow ochre. Okay. I'm going to take some of this white and just really just going to make that brilliant. And let's do the same for this petal here, just a little white. Okay, I am really liking the overall feeling of this floral. And, you know, th there's a saying, and when is the painting done? Well, you don't want to overdo it. So, I think. that I am going to call it mainly done. Well, everybody, so that is my, my floral. Here is the reference. Okay, so I think it's uh, pretty good. Um, I want to thank you all before I sign off. I just want to say that um, Picasso once said, uh, don't lose the child in you. And then there's that other saying that says, unless you become like a little child, you will not know God. Well, I'm trying to reach the child in you and, and to see things in, a, in the realm of art that inspires you and helps you find that child in you. Uh, to create something lovely that teaches the child, in, that touches the child in everyone. Uh, and I think that some art can do that. You know, but it comes from the individual person. And I just hope that this 12-week uh, episode here has helped you find that inner child, find the love inside of you that wants to paint and that you're able to paint with love. And, and I hope that, uh, that, that, that this uh, ep 12 episodes has helped bring that out. And uh, we'll do it again, so keep in touch. I love all of you, and I hope you grow uh, with love in your art. And keep on painting, kids. Bye for now, and see you soon. Don't forget get to uh, look, look at us on Facebook from time to time, on Twitter and Instagram, and sign up for our newsletter at thestevetracygallery.com. Stay in touch. God bless. Bye-bye.